And blessed to those who walk with Him, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage with Jesus. Then we His glory. Blessed to those who die to live, whose joy it is to give it all for Jesus and for Him. sanctuary bless God in the fields of plenty bless God in the darkest valley every shed socket I bless your name bless God when my hands are empty bless God with the praise it cost me bless God when nobody's watching every chance I get I bless your name bless God when the winds fall when the walls are falling, I bless God cause He goes before me. Every chance I get, I bless Your name. Bless God for He holds the victory. Bless God for He's always with me. Bless God for He's always worthy. Every chance I get, I bless Your name. Every chance I get, I bless Your. Name. So come on and praise the Lord with me. Sing if you love His name. So come on and lift your voice with me. He's worthy of all our praise. So come on and praise. So good. Praise you, Lord. All on Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, Praise Lord. God. Thank you. Thank so you, good Jesus. to be gathered with you this morning. Right. So good. Yeah. And uh, I want you to do something right now. I just want you to close your eyes. Yeah. I want you to forget about what happened 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Let's be Lord. present right now mm-hmm. with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord. You. you are Thank you, Jesus. the temple. Of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. You are the temple of the Holy Beautiful. Spirit. Yeah. 
bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is in Christ, how many people here are in Christ? Yeah. Yeah. If anyone is in Christ, new creation. Wonderful. It's here. It's now. Wonderful. It's right today. New creation. Yeah. Old things have passed away. Praise God. Behold, the whole world, everything yeah. in it looks new. That's it. It's new. Beautiful. Yeah. All things are of God. That's right. All things are of God who, as we come to Easter, has reconciled us to himself through Jesus yes. Christ. Yes, Jesus. And has also done something else, people. He's reconciled you to him. Wonderful. But he has also given you the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Yeah. That as God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, mm. he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Though God were pleading through us, yeah. we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. So, Father, right now you, in the Jesus. presence of you, that's right. we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. Holy is your name. That's right. Thank you for the mysterious thank and you, mighty Lord. work you've done yes, inside Lord. of us. Thank you, God. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. We elevate you. We magnify we you. You're good. Who is we like you, Lord? Up. God of God, King of Kings. Names. Magnify you, his Lord. name with me. Always Bless good. the Lord, O oh my soul. That's it. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. Wonderful. Bless Counselor, the Lord. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Everlasting Father. It's good to Prince be in him. Peace. It is so good to be in him. Praise That's you, right. Jesus. Praise you. Wonderful. Praise it's great to have with us Ken and Raywin Harrison. Wonderful. From Give Auckland them a huge today. hand, our dear friends. And yeah, um, awesome. we're so excited because um, I'm really excited about hearing from God today as, as, mm -hmm. as Pastor Ken preaches. And I know That's you're going right. to be blessed by that. Yeah. And uh, we're going to pray as well this we morning are. for we're our prayer pray requests. We're going to pray for our prayer requests. Who knows? We worship and love God who hears and answers prayer. We're seeing some good things happen, aren't we? We right so now? are seeing yeah. some really Great good things happen. Great answers to prayer. And, yeah, uh, that's right. Miracles, actually. Yeah, yeah. Many years. But uh, she said that her, her son is also asking questions about, yeah, about God. about God, her, her so teenage son. And can I'm I bring him in another person to our youth on Would he Friday? be able to bring a friend with him? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. I said, look, I'm sorry, we'll have to. Of course. Uh, I was like, yeah, we love that. Bring the Lord's ten. opening doors. <laughs> that's all good. Yeah, so that's let's pray. Come on, church. Thank you, yeah. Lord. We love Jesus. To you, Jesus. And we thank you Amen. that you are the name above mm -hmm. all names, Jesus. Oh, God. There is no name higher. There's no oh, power yeah. higher. You God. are the name above every situation Jesus. that we can name, every circumstance, every health mm -hmm. problem. And Jesus, together we lift up yeah. those who are in our world that we would love to know you, Jesus. Jesus, and we pray Holy that you Spirit. would bless and deliver Grip with and your convict. salvation, Lord God. Grip and convict. Lord, where there's healing that's Open needed, eyes. Lord, would you bring miraculous mm. healing into Jesus. lives, Lord, into bodies, Lord, yes. into souls that are broken, Father. into brains that are broken, Lord God, yeah. that you would bring your healing where relationships are Amen. under strain. Jesus, Amen. you are the mighty Prince Amen. of Peace. And Amen. we pray peace in all of our Amen. relationships, our work relationships, our neighbourhoods, our yes. families. Go Lord, on. that you are the Prince of Peace. Amen. Lord, bring employment. Amen. Lord, we praise you for those who've recently found jobs. It's Amen. beautiful. And Lord, we yeah. pray for those who are still waiting. Yes, God. Lord, that you are our provider. Hey, yeah. In Jesus' name. Hey, that is good. Look, we've got about, you know, 80, 100 people in the room and we're yeah. all asking God to do stuff. Wonderful. In unity. Yeah. So... You know, we believe these prayers that Amen. things are already moving in heaven. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thanks for praying this morning, church. Yeah, it's we good. love it when you pray. Great uh, to ask see you. It will be given too. to you. Yeah, Amen. welcome. Hey, before you sit down, why don't you go and say hello to Just, someone you, know, you didn't come with? Be friendly. Be a friend.
All right, grab a seat. Okay, grab a seat. Wonderful. I can't work out what's happening in March. I, I went for a walk during the week and I fe felt the first edge of, of the cooling, of, of winter is coming. Uh, and then today I, w I did the same thing and it was warm again. I can't work out what's, what's going on. But um, I like March. It's pretty good. How you going? Autumn. It's good. Good time. How you doing? Good. Good. Happy birthday to Alethea. Oh, wow. You can't come here, Alethea, and uh, not be a little embarrassed, but happy birthday. 23. What an awesome, yeah, yeah, what an awesome birthday that is. I think it's Paul Cavallo's birthday as well, if he's here. Uh, where's, where's, is Paul here? Paul's, Paul's got a birthday on as well, so um, happy birthday. Anyone else having a birthday this week? Yeah. Everly. <laughs> happy birthday, Everly. Bless you, sweetheart. Fantastic. Well, um, we have Good Friday coming up next week. Don't forget about that, 10 a.m. Um, so special service here, one hour. And uh, Pastor Mike's written a beautiful poem, which will be incredible. And Pastor Ben will be sharing and leading us around communion on, uh, on Good Friday. But right now, we're going to share communion with each other. And so you'll find on your seat a, a little cup. And uh, you can peel the top off that to get the... Wafer of bread underneath and, um, and um, work, work out how to open the cup as well. Just click it down, not up, and you'll be able to open that and get ready. If you're sharing with us today and you're just in church with us today, this is the church of Jesus Christ. You're at the table, and uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't come to that table because uh, Jesus would invite you to his table whether, you, whether you're sure about who he is or not. So you're welcome to join with us today in communion. So as we take communion today, um, I want us to take this moment. There's lots of things we could say about communion as we drink and eat together. But what I want us to do is, is to get ourselves ready for Easter um, this time around and to really prepare our hearts to remember uh, what we are privileged to be in. And that's what we do at Easter. The Easter is the moment in the year where we stop and we say, just a moment, what did Jesus do? Easter is not a long, long weekend. Yeah, for some, it's awesome. Two days off. Um, <laughs> Easter is a defining moment. It's the remembrance of a defining moment in the world. I've just been, have you, who's seen Oppenheimer? watching a, a Netflix show at the moment called uh, Turning Point, The Bomb and the Cold War. And as I've watched this, I realised, you know, it's a long time ago, but the atomic bomb was a defining moment in history. I mean, something happened that had never happened before. That you could destroy the whole world with a button. It was horrible. And um, there have been many defining moments in the history of the world. There have been pandemics, which have been defining moments. The last one Pretty, pretty challenging. There have been revolutions that have changed the world, moments where everything's been different after a certain political thing happened. There's technology that's changed the world. I think these things have changed the way that the world works. You know? And uh, for, yeah, for good, good or bad. And so uh, there's been religious movements that have changed the world. Um, one, one moment it's one way, the next minute. It isn't. But I would say this, that there's nothing that's changed the world that, to the extent that Jesus Christ and his crucifixion 
has changed the world. And, yeah. and you might say, yeah, yeah, but it's just the same as, you know, tech, as the invention of the iPhone and it's another one of those things. No, it isn't. It isn't. Um, today is one week out from Jesus' resurrection. Do you, do you hear what I just said? A guy was dead and he's alive from the dead, never to die again. That's a life-changing, world-changing moment. And uh, he came into uh, Jerusalem on this day, this Sunday, which is traditionally called Palm Sunday. And the crowd was extremely excited because they had expectations of something. And um, he was on a borrowed donkey. That's symbolic. God is coming into Jerusalem. The Messiah is coming into Jerusalem on a borrowed donkey. He's not in a chariot. He's not on a, a, a white horse. But if Jesus is God, God allowed himself to be killed. What does that mean? What does it mean that God allowed him to be killed in creatures? I just want to throw that out to you because as we come to Easter and as we come to this meal today, I don't so much want to tell you, oh, he did this for you and he did that for you. But rather, as you come to Easter, have you experienced the significance of what Jesus has done for you? I think this time around, it's a good time for us to, to revisit, to go back to just a minute. This is bigger than the atomic bomb. This is bigger than the iPhone. This is bigger than the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, whatever revolution. This is bigger than anything that's ever happened in the history of the world because we killed God, but God allowed himself to be killed and then he was resurrected and he came back and said, it's okay, I'm doing a whole new thing. It's so exciting. So as we come to Easter, I want to invite you to think about what you have been given by these events and ask yourself to get it because Jesus wants us to get it. There's so much beauty and wonder and goodness in what Jesus has done to us. So as we eat and drink this morning, let's give thanks and let's commit ourselves as we come to Easter to really spend some time uh, allowing Jesus to speak to us. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, um, thank you. Thank you that you cared enough about us to come to our world. Thank you that you laid down your life for us. Thank you, Lord, that you... You're with us today. And thank you, Lord, that the world is not like what most people think it's like. It's like what you have done. Bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, praise God. Well, Pastor Linda is going to come right now and uh, she's going to lead us around the office. Fantastic. Hey, welcome. Great to have you with us. We'd love to meet you sometime. If I haven't, my name's Mandy and Simon and I have the privilege of leading this terrific church. I'd love to uh, get myself organized. I'd love to invite you to join us at this offering time. The giving options will be appearing behind me on the screen any second. Now, of course, if you would prefer to give by cash or writing up a credit card slip, you're most welcome. Just pop your hand in the air. Our service manager will come down. I think that might be you, Rosie, today and help you with that. It is wonderful to have Pastors Ken and Raywan Harrison here with us from Auckland. Give them another hand. And it's just such a highlight of our year to have you guys with us, uh, dear friends of Simon and and personally, but also friends of the church and have been for a few years. I'd count it's been a long time. It's been so wonderful. And do you know how modest these guys are? They led a church, a very successful church in Auckland for many years. And not only that, but Pastor Ken was superintendent of the AOG churches in New Zealand for more than 20 years. They both lecture at Alpha Crucis, which is the premier Australian uh, Pentecostal place of higher learning, and they're in demand all over the world still and travel, and it's such an honour to have you guys here with us today. And as church, we always do with our guest speakers. We feel it's 
really important to honour them appropriately. So I'd love you to get ready to give at the end of the service. We will be giving you an opportunity to take part in that. Right now, I'd love to encourage you in our regular giving. Matthew 6, 19 to 21, Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where and there. Where and there. I write poetry. I just can't help myself. Where words rhyme, I always look where and there. Where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Jesus, there's a connection actually between our heart and our treasure. Because our heart will follow whatever it is that we treasure. For this reason, folks, God designed us to worship. And what we worship, treasure. And what we treasure, we worship. They're interlinked. Of course, we're designed to make Jesus our greatest treasure. And I'm sure you're like me, your heart in the right place. So we need to direct our treasure or it will direct us. Let me ask you this question this morning, church. Are you training your treasure or is your treasure training you? The first thing Simon and I do when that packet hits the bank account is the very first thing we do is we give God of our first, our best to him. And it's an act of faith. We set up a budget every year. Many of you have something similar. And if you haven't started this practice yet, I'd love to invite you to consider doing that and make that first line item your gift to Jesus. Why don't we pray together this morning? Jesus, thank you so much for your kindness to us, for your generosity to us, Lord, every cent that's in our bank account and the ability to earn it a gift from you. And Lord, we... we as our living sacrifice to you, give these offerings back to you, Lord, and we love you. We worship you together this morning. Amen. And Jess, why don't you hop up? We're about to release the kids. Why don't you give Jess a hand? I also clap for myself because it's important. <laughs> um, all right, in two Sundays' time, we have. Yes, let's go. But also, the kids did not sound very excited. Where are the kids? Give me a scream, kids. Yeah, look. We, we haven't worked on that yet. Oh, they've already left. Okay. Oh, they actually have. They're empty. Anyways, in two Sundays' time, Josiah stood up because he got really worried. Sorry. Sorry. That was really funny. <laughs> Sorry. In two Sundays' time, we have the first Crazy Kids Sunday of this year. Um, we do four of these every year. Oh, where we get to invite new families to come and check out the church, come and meet Jesus, and come and meet our community. And we only do four of them, um, so I, you know, it's, <laughs> but we'd love to do more. Um, and what I would love from you guys is to be praying over this event. Now, um, Pastor Simon shared last week that as a team, we are praying for three new families to come and to our church, their church. Um, not just to visit, but to make a commitment to our church. Um, and I think that's really exciting for me. I believe we already know these three families. I believe that we already connected to them through one way or another, whether as a neighbor, whether it's at school. Um, and I love hearing the stories of, oh, I know who to invite. They really need God in their life. They need that peace in their life. Um, but I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's a moment. Let us know. We want to pray with you for those families because, you know, they already know Jesus through you. They're already one step in and Jesus already knows them. So we want to partner with you to pray for those families. So if you are going to invite a family, but you're a bit nervous, talk to one of the kids' leaders, talk to one of the pastoral staff. We'd love to pray with you over those families because we want them here. We want the kids here. God calls his children here. He doesn't keep them outside the door, uh, take them else he calls them here because that's where they need to be yeah. um, so, <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, so yeah let's pray into the event together um, if you feel like there's a family that you want prayer for please come and talk to us we'd love to pray with you lord we thank you for the opportunity to host crazy kids sunday we can reach families and new 
through families, bring kids back into your home, back into church. Lord, Lord, I pray that the invitations we give out over the next few weeks, I pray that they arrive in the right hands. Lord, in the hearts of the parents, the children, so that they're excited to come and see. They will come and see, come and taste, and they would fall in love with you. They will fall in love with the community, and they will make a choice to make this their church, Lord, and make you their Lord, Lord. Um, and we pray that today as we go out into the program, Lord, that the kids will see you afresh. They will see your face. They will feel your love and that they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit and have lots and lots of fun. Amen. Amen. Why don't we stand and we'll continue to worship together this morning.
forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that you are a forgiving God. Lord, the world, we all need forgiveness. Lord, all of us have things, burdens, disappointments. I know I look at myself sometimes and I think, oh God, like what an idiot. And even worse, Lord, I know I sometimes think, God, I'm ashamed of things. I regret things. I wish I'd done things differently. But Lord, with you there is forgiveness for you. Everything. Lord, you you clear the decks. You remove our sins from us as far as the east is from the west. You you clean us up, you heal us, you pour oil on us, you you're the ultimate emergency <laughs> room. Would you fix us completely, better than anybody. I just want you to reach out right now and just come before him. God is angry for a moment. His loving kindness endures for eternity. It takes a while sometimes to realize just how much you're loved, just how much you're forgiven, just how much you can just let go of that offense. Even if the offense is against yourself. When they used to put animals on the altar, the animal was given over and it was burnt up. And it's the same with our offences. They're dealt with. So Holy Spirit, forgive us our sins as long as, as we forgive others who sin against us. And Lord, we forgive others who sin against us. Even the things that people have done that seem to have placed us in horrible situations, Lord, you can use that. Redeem it. Change it. Transform us anyway. I'm saying these things, church, because I want you to hear it. I want you to take it in. God is saying to you this morning, I forgive you. I forgive you. So if I forgive you, forgive yourself. Let it go. Shoro marashi kirandai, shipapardo modesiki, siya marashoro morendam pasarasi kiritiat, sambarami ataki antamara pasharandam, and praying in tongues, praying in the Lord. Kurina shara balisharasi kinitara basharam bidis yambaraba. God, every accusation, God, every demonic voice, God, everything that the evil one would bring against us, we cast it down under your feet. We cast it down in Jesus' name. We put our foot on it. We stand on the ground that you have made in Jesus' name. Lord, we are fearfully and wonderfully made, beautifully made, designed for you, Lord, glorified together with you by the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord, that you are coming and touching everybody in this room. God, every angry thing, God, every 
shameful thing. God, every lying thing. Lord, you are the spirit of truth. We, you are the light that comes in and floods our being. And everything that is in darkness, Lord, is shown to be what it really is, fake and not part of our future. So we, we bring it to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you look, you're happy to dwell with us. I pray that you'd cause us to see clearly so that we're not afraid. In Jesus' name, lift our eyes, lift the eyes, lift the eyes of the heart everyone in this room for a spirit of revelation to see clearly in Jesus name amen 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 it's great to take a little bit of time you know just to organize your heart organize that part of you that's inside of you and uh, to let the Lord straighten it all out so God bless you this morning well, I'm going to hand over to Pastor Ken right now, and we're so excited, Pastor Ken, that you're with us. So let's give him a big hooray this morning. Praise God. It is a privilege for Ray and I to be here, and. Um, you know, it, it does feel like uh, being part of the family of God and spiritual home and just really, really love uh, our time with you. And I really enjoyed yesterday morning with uh, young leaders. Uh, I think. Uh, it, it just um, was just wonderful. And um, it's interesting because this is um, the earliest we've ever come. Uh, in the year, year yeah. to the church. So um, it, it's quite fascinating because, you know, I, I get before God and I, I pray about services. One of the things I enjoy now is that when we are invited to various places, we can concentrate 100% on that because we've handed our, our church over and things like that. And, um, you know, I want to congratulate you on 40 years. Yeah. That, that, that is absolutely amazing because, um, you know, I, uh, some of you probably don't realize this, but I came to this church probably in its uh, second year of operation because my youngest brother, David, and his wife, Jody, got married. They lived for a while in Wollstonecraft, and uh, um, he wrote to me and says, you got to come to this church. Uh, the pastor sits on a stool and he speaks and it's just, wow, and it was a Sunday night. And so I was coming back from ministering in Asia and I uh, stopped and stayed with him and we went to church. And that's when I first heard Dr. Ian Jaglin uh, speak and then kicked him back and I met Simon and Richard, two Richards and, yeah. and the association. And so it, it, it's been wonderful to see the journey of this church, uh, and uh, you know, where you've come from, and it, I count it a privilege to have the ability to speak into your church life, and I love the relationship with your pastor, and and both pastors, and it, you know, it's so very important today that we understand that we're all on a journey, and um, you know, forty years, and and I, I, you know. 40 is significant in the Bible. Um, it's often the signal of season of release, season of, of moving into that which in a fuller measure from that which is already established. Right. And so I want to speak to that first, and then I want to speak to how we can stay in it. Right. 
and continue to leave a lasting legacy because this church is already establishing a legacy, hallelujah, from what it's been doing in the last 40 years. And um, God has intended every generation to know the power of his love, his grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, uh, his acceptance. And they can only know if we tell them. They can only know we're here today because somebody told us or somebody reached out to us or somebody invited us to be a part of this. Uh, you may be here because you just walked off the street and um, came to service one day. We had a few of those over the years, and, and it was wonderful. But, you see, the classic thing we have to understand is that 40 years as a church is no small thing in today's world. Raymond and I have been in leadership and ministry for a little longer than the 40 years. <laughs> and uh, uh, we've seen, unfortunately, churches come and go. We've seen leaders come and go. And uh, so don't underestimate what, what you are a part of here. Because, you see, uh, one of the things I love doing when I go overseas, I've got a free day, especially if I'm in England or somewhere in Europe, I love to visit cathedrals. Um, because they were built, I mean, I, the first one I ever went into was in a place called Norwich. And it was built for the glory of God that every generation may know there's a God in heaven who cares about his people. That was written on a plaque. It was built after they withstood a major attack from the Vikings. And uh, the Vikings never came back to that area because thunder and lightning destroyed the ship. Their God was Thor, and I figured <laughs> Thor was angry with them. And so that's the area of England where Christianity survived during that time. But, you know, I remember the first time I walked in there, and it was 122 years in the building. But this is the point that, that, that really hit me. The great, 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 great grandson of the first master builder and bricklayer laid the last brick. The great, 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 great grandson of the first master builder laid the last brick. As I stood there, I, God began to speak to me about legacy and generations. And that's what you as a church are about. Hallelujah. Yes, you receive the blessing of God and the encouragement of God and the strength of God in who you are day by day and Sunday by Sunday. But you're also leaving a legacy for the children and the children's children, for your grandchildren, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because the Lord tarries because He wants the fruit of the harvest to come fully in. So we occupy till He comes. We do the works of Jesus till He comes. And so we may be here for only a few more years. We may be here for hundreds of years. Only God knows the times and the seasons. So we have to be those that are, are working in this season. And I want to start by saying this. It was a word that God has given me ever since I uh, knew we were coming at this time and I knew you were celebrating your 40th year. And it's simply this. This is a time for the church to move forward into a new season of fruitfulness and to expand, to take new ground and develop that for the kingdom of God. Let me say it again. This is a time for you as a church, C3 Lanco, to move forward into a season of new season of fruitfulness. It does not disparage what has happened in the past because you can only build on that which is laid in the foundation of the past. In the nation of Israel, they had 40 year cycles and there were buildings on those cycles, etc. And what we need to understand is that we get to stand on the shoulders of others. Yes. Hallelujah. And uh, I believe because you do that and because of what has been laid in the life of this church, you're able to go further and do more than what previous generations did. Yeah. And that's not disparaging what they did. They yeah. have far greater resources today yeah. than they did back there. We're staying with, with Roz and her husband, Gordy. I just love the stories of the 
outback. You know, you came off that farm and what they had to go through. And, and the reason I, I love it is because as a kid growing up, you know, one of the first movies I ever saw was Skippy. <laughs> and and the, the second one I remember seeing was Smiley. Uh, and, and they're all about the outbacks, see, uh, of Australia. And, and, and I, I look at what that generation did and with the little that they had and how they carved out this country and, and so many things. Earlier, uh, sorry, last year we had our granddaughter in the Southern Highlands. And um, we're over here because uh, she's starting university, we wanted one more major holiday with her sort of thing. It was just her and us. And we, we went down to Bandanoon and we went walking in the, in the what do you call it, reserve, um, park, national park there. And uh, what I couldn't get over was the sheer drops of these cliffs. And I was standing there thinking, man, if you're a first-time person to this country and, you know, you're trying to find new agriculture around the imagine when you hit that cliff and you came from, from England or you came from some place that is primarily flat. I mean, Ben Nevis isn't as big as some of those cliffs out there, you know, and just the dauntingness of it, but they conquered it. And that's why you're here today. And it's same as true in the church and who we are as people. Because of the faithfulness of those that have gone behind and we remember the past, we celebrate the past and what God has done in you and has done in this church, he's raised up leaders and pastors, he planted churches to meet needs and other areas. He's changed lives, praise God. And you can say, this is my church reaching out. But because my church is reaching out, we're going to continue to reach out and see increased fruitfulness and increase uh, new grounds. I'm going to explain that a little later. It's also beginning of the year. I know this is often done in most churches, is we refocus vision. So I was blessed to hear that uh, when we're out with um, Pastor and, and uh, Mandy on, on um, uh, Friday. Friday night, yeah. Yeah, that you've already had your retreat. And you already sat down with the leaders and talked about the vision going forward. Because this is absolutely vital. Uh, I, I believe things rise and fall calling to vision. Right. You know, Jesus gave his followers a vision. Come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And then the first time he sent them out, they came back all excited about, we've got the power, you know. <laughs> uh, we can cast out demons. Well, this is great. And Jesus said, well, that's awesome. But remember... More rejoicing in heaven over one soul that is saved. Yeah. What's he doing? He's bringing them back to the vision. Yeah. So they're not distracted from what God is doing. And, and so, you know, as we refocus and vision of this church to influence locally, to influence nationally, to influence internationally, we're going to continue to reach out to the non church. It's so exciting hearing about the children's thing in a few weeks' time. You know, we have specific events that we can invite people to. There's also events that we have in our everyday life. Mm -hmm. You see, all of this enables us to move forward as a church. All of this enables us to uh, expect and know that God will bring forth a fruitfulness. And in that fruitfulness, there are new grounds. There are new opportunities to develop as you go forward. But also, the Lord just said to me, you have to be ready also for spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got here today because people in the past have paid a price in prayer, have paid a price in giving, have paid a price in time, have paid a price in sowing their gift. And you are still doing that today. And that's how the church goes forward because all of us here have four things that, that we have. We have our time, we have our talents, we have our resources, and we have our giftings. Mm. And where we sow those is part of leaving a legacy. Mm. Obviously, we sow it into our family, our children. When we're married with children. Uh, we, we, the older generation, hopefully, is sowing it into the younger generation. That's what I loved yesterday because, for me, I count it a privilege to speak to the younger generation. I, I've grown up in a large family, seven brothers and sisters. Uh, there's 20 years. I mean, when I came back as from an exchange student in America, uh, uh, before I went, my youngest brother was being breastfed. That's David. 
And when I came home, he was sort of running down the driveway to greet me, you know. And um, he was five at our wedding. So, but I loved having a huge spread of family because it always kept us relevant. Yeah. You know, we would sit down and we would talk. And even now, I sit down even with my son and my daughter-in-law, sit down with my grandchildren, and I want to hear from them because yeah. I want to be relevant to the generation around about me, just not being thinking of as a stale white male, <laughs> you know, which I had one person say to me one time, and I thought, oh, I'm going to change this, but, uh, um, but it was after a very strong discussion with that person <laughs> to try and help them sort their life out, but you see, we got to be ready for spiritual battles, because uh, we understand the power of prayer, we understand the power of praying in tongues. We understand the power of walking in obedience to the Word of God. Yo, know, those are our three greatest weapons. The power of corporate prayer, praying together as, as a church, praying together in groups, praying in tongues, because when you pray in tongues, you're always praying in the will of God. But one of the greatest areas of spiritual warfare is you and I walking in obedience to the Word of God. Because you're going to confront the spirit of the age. You're going to confront the culture round about you. And so, yes, we're going to remember the past, praise God, celebrate, and then we refocus as our vision. We refocus to continue uh, local influence, national influence, international influence. We continue to reach out to the unchurched. We're ready for spiritual battle because we're praying. We pray in tongues. We walk in obedience. And then we see God release his Holy Spirit in greater measure. Now, let me explain what that means, because we have a lot of songs about more of this and more of that. God has given all he's going to give when he gave his Holy Spirit and when he gave Jesus. He, he can't give anything more, and he can't give anything less. You and I have the same Holy Spirit that Jesus has when he was on earth. Now, just think about that. Jesus said, the works I do, you shall do in greater works. So we have the empowerment of the Spirit of God. We have the resource of heaven. We have the gifts of the Spirit. We have the Word of God. We have the presence of God. We have the authority in His name. And that's why we're told to go and make disciples. We haven't got anything less. Every single one of us here just as capable as anybody with a title or a position or anything like that of doing what God wants us to do in this world, praise God. And all of us here are in full-time service for God. There's no such thing as this is secular, this is spiritual. Because you are a child of the living God, because you're God's beloved son and daughter, he has put his spirit within you, he has put... Um, his power within you. He's given you his authority. And so you take that wherever you go. You know, you can't leave it at the door going to some place that you shouldn't be going to and then pick it up on the way and you come back out. <laughs> no, no. He's with you the whole time. That's right. And so he's going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to say, ought not to. And you've got to obey it. Or he's going to say, this is the peace of God and you can go and do it. And so being refreshed by the Holy Spirit and implanted by the Holy Spirit. And so I want to declare over you as a church this morning that as you continue to raise up leaders, as you continue to reach out to the, the lost, as you continue to refocus and vision both locally, nationally, internationally, as you continue to um, know what it is to continue to prevail in corporate prayer and praying in time, and walking in obedience. And praise God, this church will move forward into a season of fruitfulness and an expansion that you've never seen before. It will also enable you to navigate, and this is something I've got very strongly, it will also enable you to navigate the cultural landscape that's developing out there. A landscape out there culturally that the church never had to face before. You know? Um, and 
a world that is becoming more and more hostile to the gospel that you and I have. And a world that, from my experience of recent months and talking to and say, they know more about what the church is against than what the church is for. Yeah. And that's a tragedy. And so we have to be those that are showing forth that love. One of the things I saw is, is God's going to place you into some very interesting places, but he's going to cause you to be light there. And he'll give you the wisdom of how to speak into that situation. He's going to give you the grace to forbear some of the things that may be happening. And then, all of a sudden, it'll be like a door open and you'll be able to speak. You'll be able to share. You'll be able to take your life to touch their life. Somebody will come and ask you a question. Why are you different? Or why are you like that? And um, as we were praying before in the back room, and uh, Simon prayed a prayer. And as he was praying, God gave me this, this picture. And I want to share it with you as a church. Because the fascinating thing is God reminded me, it was the picture the very first day I spoke in this church almost, I think it's 22 years ago now. Um, and it was simply this. I saw fresh oil. But it was... It was, had fire in it, okay? And fire always speaks of the presence of God with us. On the day of Pentecost, you know, when the children of Israel went through the wilderness, what did they have by night? Fire. The fire, and they had the cloud by day. What did that represent? Holy the Holy Spirit. It represented the power of God. It represented the presence of God. Come to the day of Pentecost... The fire is no longer a single column. What does it do? It breaks up and tongues of fire goes on every single person in the upper room. So what I saw happening is that, uh, for one of the, we, we have these expressions often in Pentecost and we think, what does that mean? Uh, you know, if, if I was living in an old Pentecost, I said, you're going to get a fresh unction of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but... Or I'd say you're going to get a fresh anointing. No, what it simply is, is you're going to find a greater dynamics of God in your life. And I, I saw this touching um, Pastor Simon, Pastor Mandy. I saw it coming on the leaders. I saw it on those that are developing leaders and then flowing in the church. And it was quite fascinating because when I came in here, I was praying up and down the aisles. And I saw you, the congregation, as you go out that door, it was like, a river of fire. You, you ever seen lava and the way it goes? Now, I'm not saying you're going to be lava, but it was this river of fire, the anointing of God going with you to be what God's called you to be and to do what God's called you to do. You do not have to be afraid. You do not have to be timid. At the same time, you don't have to be ooky spooky. Just be normal, naturally spiritual and spiritual. Natural, and you will find opportunities as you go out there to take new ground for God. God will open doors for you because this anointing that I saw in the picture came down, and like I said, on the leaders and the leadership flowed over everybody. And I saw that this year, this was aspect of, of renewal and strengthening and revisioning, uh, positioning yourself to do these things, and it's out of that the fruit and the new ground. And so, could we stand right now because I'm going to pray for this uh, over us at this point so we don't lose what God is doing. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Jesus. What I'd like is the leadership team to just come and stand across the front. And um, then I would like those that were with us yesterday uh, morning to come and stand behind them. Hallelujah. The rest of us to link hands across oh, all the connect group leaders as well. Yeah, Dom, can you come and join me? And uh, could anyone have a mic, please? Yeah. Okay. And the rest of you, I, I'd like you to connect hands across the, across the aisles. Like, we are the body of Christ. We are C3, Lane Cove. Okay, and um, we're going to pray 
right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do you want to pray for it? Okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. But God, right now, Lord, I thank you for the 40 years that have been. I thank you for the celebrations that have happened. I thank you for the words that have been declared. Hallelujah. And Father God, this morning, I thank you. Let there come a fresh touch of your love, your grace, your mercy, even as we felt in the worship time. Let it increase upon us right now, Father. Let there come a fresh impartation of the fire of your Spirit into each of our hearts, that we would have courage, that we would have strength, that we would have wisdom as your church father god that father we thank you that as we walk in obedience to your word as we continue in the strength of your spirit lord you're going to add through each one of us into the life of the church you're going to extend your kingdom locally nationally and internationally other churches are going to be strengthened and encouraged and built leaders are going to <laughs> be released for your glory we your people will serve you in places of your appointment and father god we do not have to be anxious we do not have to be uh, uh anxious about what is happening round about us because lord by your spirit you make us equal to every situation we find ourselves in release this into your people lord your word declares which is born of God overcomes the world and we are born of God and we will overcome in your love, in your grace, in your power, in your mercy. We will be all that you've called us to be and we will do all that you've called us to do. Settle upon us, Holy Spirit, and seal these things in each of our lives now we pray. In Jesus' name, increase fruitfulness, increase of ground being taken and developed and being placed in situations where we shine in a culture that doesn't reflect you, but we reflect you. We show forth your love. Let us go in your anointing, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And seal it in our lives, we pray, by your Spirit now. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you are here right now and that you are moving. Holy Spirit, we pray that you will fan the flame yes, of your presence, your Holy Spirit within each one of us. God, we pray that you will indeed, uh, we may burn brightly yes. with the presence of Jesus, with the love of Jesus. And Father God, we thank you that in these days of seems to be getting darker, Lord, that we will shine even brighter yes, with your love, with your presence, with your grace, and Lord, that there will indeed be people that we can reach out and minister to with your love and who will come in and know you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe it's an important thank you. I really love that. And, you know, I, I've heard a lot about things and graces. And I just want to say this to you. You're a treasure. Yeah. You're an absolute treasure. <laughs> both, both in the life of the church, but also out in the community. And if you want, from what I've seen and heard, you're a wonderful example of let your light shine and not hide it under a bushel. I just want to bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, I just want to give you some keys now on how this, what we've just declared and what happened. But one of the things is, uh, as we were praying, I just want to say this again. Just think about this and meditate on it. One pillar of fire over the whole of the nation of Israel, from 
day of Pentecost, the fire is now in each of us. So wherever you go, God is there with you. You know? And that was the significance of the fire. The, you know, types of fire separated and all. Everybody in Israel knew what the fire stood for. It always stood for the presence of God. You know, when, when they uh, opened the temple, the glory of God came down. And the, the, uh, some of the ancient record, it was like this, it appeared to them as fire. The glory appeared to them as fire. And so you have resting on you and in you the glory of God, the presence of God, the love of God. We have to change our thinking. We allow too much of the world to dumb us down in our Christian experience, you know, and to the point we have to be apologetic about some of the things we stand for. No, we don't. You know, you, you'll find you'll get incredible opportunities just by being who you are in the love of God and grace of God and just being different because you are a Christian to the point they'll turn around and ask you, why is she different? Why don't you cuss like everybody else? Why don't you, you know, do this, do that? And they say, well, because I have somebody who lives in me and my body's the temple of the Holy Spirit and I don't want to. And I say, what? what? Okay. Your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? And so I sit down and I explain it to them. And you'll be amazed how much people out there are on a search for spirituality and that very thing, but they don't know because they've never been told. They know the church is against this and against this and against this and against this. They don't know that we have a love that brings loves, acceptance, forgiveness, mercy, grace. Hallelujah. So the question I have to you this morning, how is all this possible? How is increased fruitfulness and taking new ground possible? Well, it's found very simply in four things. It's found in loving God. It's found in loving your neighbor as yourself. It's found in maintaining godly character and conduct. And it's found in walking in the power of the Holy Spirit daily. How is it possible? It's possible because we love God. It's possible because we love our neighbor as ourselves. It's possible because we maintain godly character and conduct. And it's possible because we walk daily in the power of God. You know, it's quite fascinating. In Scripture, there's no single action that defines a person who loves God. There's no single action. Okay? But the person who does love God will do those things that I just mentioned. They will abide in loving their neighbor. They, have a bit, they will walk in godly character and conduct. They live in the power of the Spirit. That's how we can live a legacy that lasts. And we, and we see increased fruit for us and we see new ground. Let's just look at this fact of loving God and loving our neighbor for a moment. Because the key scripture, Mark 12, 28 to 33, one of the teachers of the law came and heard the debate, noticed that Jesus was giving them a good answers. So this guy is obviously standing in the crowd. Jesus is debating with, with the people at the time. And so he thought he would come forward. And I don't think he's coming forward just to be smart. He's coming forward because he has a genuine need to, to know the truth. And he says, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answer Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Any religious leader at that day would have known that. It was part of the Shema. And in fact, what they write on little pieces of paper, which people even today, and they put in a little thing on their doors. If you go to a Jewish home, and it's, it's, this is actually written. The Lord your God is one God. He only is to be served. And, and so that was, but then Jesus adds this. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's the shock for everybody that was there. You see, that's the practical outworking of loving God. That's what I love about Jesus. He taught and then he demonstrated. He lived it out and we have to do the same. There is no commandment greater than these. Well, said the teacher, the man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there's no other but him. Love him with all your heart, with all your standing, with all your strength. 
and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that, he had answered wisely. He said to them, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one did ask any more questions. <laughs> no more religious leaders did until they tried to trap him uh, at one time. But what we see here is that, and what I see in this church, you've always had a commitment to love God, you know, the great commandment and the great commandment. To love God and to love people, because this is a twofold approach to life. And Jesus modeled this purpose uh, perfectly in his legacy and had the greatest impact of any individual in history. He left, he didn't leave a legacy in money or property or power, which uh, we can do in these days. Instead, he left a legacy of loving God completely. And it was a sacrificial love. You see, God's love changes how and what you see in yourself and others. I, I look at how Jesus treated the woman of Samaria. To do that, he had to cross three barriers, three norms of the day. The first norm was a man could never speak to a woman, a Jewish man could never speak to a woman in public. What was Jesus doing? Talking to the woman at the well. Second thing, a rabbi could never be found in the presence of a loose living woman. The fact that she was out at the middle of the day spoke to everybody that there was problems. She had problems with the woman who came in the morning at night. So obviously she was involved in some kind of um, moral dilemma. She was a prostitute. And thirdly, she was a Samaritan who was a Jew. So there was the cultural barrier. And here's Jesus sitting down talking to her, giving her the first revelation of Messiah that Jews couldn't even understand. Every religious question he asked her, uh, uh, she wanted to get into a religious debate, he just asked her questions. He just asked her questions. Good point for evangelism, that. Yeah. A lot of people want to get into religious discussions with you because that means they can feel one up on you or... I scored a point over you. I turn around and I just ask them questions. Mm -hmm. Where is that in the Bible? Then you find out if they read the Bible or not. <laughs> and little things like that. But that's a side. Okay? And, and so what happens? She goes back and says, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. And see, you see, the love of Jesus changes how and what we see, not only in ourselves, but in others. And the love of, of, of God changes how we live day by day. And, you know, it says here in Galatians 5, you are my brothers and sisters, we're called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the sin to nature, but rather serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, you'll be destroyed by each other. In other words, love changes how we live day by day. We speak well of one another. We encourage one another. We bless one another. And if there's a problem to be solved, we don't go and share it with everybody else. We sit down one-on-one -on -one and we sort it out. And then love changes what we say to ourselves and what we say to others. Ephesians 4, 22 to 32. I'll just read one verse. Verse 29. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for the building up of others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. So you see, this love that God has put in us and our love for God and our love for our neighbors as ourselves means that we will change how and what we see in ourselves. We will change how we live day by day and we will change what we say, not only to ourselves but to others. I find this rather fascinating, you know, because uh, I've had to help people over the years who stood in front of mirrors and say to themselves, I'm stupid, I'm this, I'm that, because of their upbringing. And I said, no, you're not that. You're not a mistake. You're not an accident of birth. You're not this. You're not that. God says you're a beloved son. You're a beloved daughter. You have a destiny of your purpose. We've got to speak this into people's lives. Yeah. One of the things I used to do with some of those, especially some of the young people, we lived in 
South Auckland, which was the lowest socioeconomic area of New Zealand. Um, and and uh, we had people come out of homes who were saved, and they were the first one of generations being saved. And, and so one of the things I used to say to them when we'd run into them, I said, who are you? And they say, I'm a child of the Most High God. I'm born again. I'm filled of the Spirit of God. Nothing that needs me can prosper. And we use that to teach them scriptures. Wow. They've never learned before. And so rather than saying, I'm hopeless, I'm useless, I'll never amount to much, you know, they declare this. You see, that's what the love of God does. Us. And that's what we do to others, and that's how we speak to others. That's what gives us the platform and the right to be heard. You know, one of the forms of evangelism I use because I'm always uh, working with Christians uh, is I, I, I have an eye for serving people because I've noticed since COVID the abuse they get is horrendous sometimes in supermarkets and and petrol stations. I don't know if you're a serving person here. I want to bless you in Jesus' name. You're working in a very tough environment because there's generations out there that have a particular expectation and everything begins and ends with them. <laughs> but anyway, I was, I was just recently, a few weeks back, I was in my normal supermarket. I was waiting in line. There's a young guy there, and I've seen him over the weeks. And this particular day, he's making mistakes. You know? um, and I, I just said, and this person was really sounding him up. I said, God, why is this happening? Yeah, I'm standing there in a queue, so I begin to interview God. And he said, he's like this because he's the provider for his household and his mother's sick. And so, um, you know, I start to pray for him. I come up to him and I say, I want to say to you, you're not like what that person has just said. And he looked at me and he's taken stuff and taken him through. I said, your mum's homesick, isn't she? And he looked at me and said, how do you know that? I said, there's a God in heaven who loved you, who told me, I'm a minister and I'm praying for you in heaven. And you're worried about her. And he said, yes, I am. And so what I'm going to pray for her, he told me her name. And, uh, you know, I leave, I'm walking home and I'm praying for her. Right. A couple of days later, I'm back in the supermarket. He seeks me out and says, mum's fine now. You know, and, and so, yeah. Um, yeah, all glory to God. But the reason I, I share that is how do we talk to others, the conversation? If we're going to be increase in fruitfulness, and we're going to increase in taking new grounds. It's got to happen through us doing the work. Yeah. And, and so that's loving God and, 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 and loving others, praise God. And just remember this, the last uh, parables that Jesus spoke about in Matthew's gospel on the sheep and the goats, what was the difference between the sheep and the goats? It, it's what they gave people, what they did for people. Even a cup of cold water in my name, that was the sheep. The goat says, well, we did this, so we did that, we did that. And Jesus, depart from me, didn't know. In other words, they didn't love their neighbors themselves. It's all about I, me, mine, and myself. And so we, we had to take forward and to take that. And then I say we have to maintain godly character and conduct. There's a scripture that has been coming to me the whole time since I, I've been here and praying, and so if you could bring it up on, on the screen, 2 Peter 1, 5 to 10. Yesterday, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith. You see, when we're born again, we have faith, but we are to add goodness. By the way, it says Jesus went about doing good. good. Goodness is actions that we do to those round about us. You know, I, I loved hearing Roz speak about the work she does Kairos and, and the group and I love hearing people's story of how they reach into the community and things that they do. This is goodness being added to your faith. Hallelujah. And then knowledge, you know, that's what we hear on Sundays for, that's what we do in small groups, uh, that's why we do study and we're growing in our knowledge of God because, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, word of God. And so we grow in our faith and self-control. Yeah, praise God. You know, that's very needed in today's world, self-control. And then from self-control to perseverance, we've got to keep in the race. We keep going. Yeah, we may be knocked down, but we go forward. I, I remember a person many years ago told me that faith and perseverance is like this. One, two, three. One, two. But I'm still going forward one step. 
<laughs> you, know, you know, we press forward, but we may get a knockback, or we may have a wall, or we may have something happen, and we may go back a few, but we've still got things built in our lives, and we're still going forward. And, and this is maintaining our godly character and our godly conduct. And it says here, um, perseverance, godliness, and godliness relates to loving God, loving our neighbor, and to godliness, mutual affection. That is the area of showing uh, love and care. For the, in the Old Test, sorry, in the life of Jesus, you'll see a number of times it says he was moved with compassion. And compassion is being in the skin of another. Okay? And so sometimes you're going to have to just pause a moment and say, if I was on the receiving end of what I'm about to say to this person, how would I respond? You know, and yeah, well, if I'd feel a bit upset, don't be surprised if they feel a bit upset. Or if I go to feel a bit shy. What it does, it prepares you to draw from Jesus in the moment, in the present. Okay? And then from there, but whoever does not have these, sorry, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they'll keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of Jesus. But whoever does not have these is nearsighted, and blind, forgetting they have been cleansed from the past. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to have your calling secure. So we do these things, and we allow these to be outworked in our lives. We will be fruitful and faithful. And one last thing, praise God. We are to walk each day in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And it's just one scripture here. 1 John 1, 7. If we walk in the light, as he is the light, we have fellowship one with another. Light implies knowing, you know, and walking implies doing. So a C3 church, you know, as you know the mind of God and the will of God, and as you do it, there's increased fruitfulness, there's new ground going forward. So in closing, three words, commit, be constantly available to God. Commit, focus, available. Commit to loving God. Commit to loving your neighbors yourself. Commit to maintain godly character and conduct. Commit to walk daily in the path of the Spirit. Focus on the dreams, the visions, the possibilities the promises. Hallelujah. Because they will guide you by conviction then, not by preference. And lastly, be constantly available to God. Hallelujah. As we move day by day. These things will be worked out in you in ever increasing measure. And you are that anointing that goes out that door. You are the presence of God. That door. To everywhere that you go. Hallelujah. Stand. I want to say this over you and then I have to back to Pastor. C3, let go, live for the glory of God and love Him. Lovingly demonstrate the gospel with relevance and power by loving your neighbor as yourself. Always remain a learner so you can maintain godly character and continue to walk in the Holy Spirit. Then you will build on the legacy that is being established and you will have a legacy that will span generations that will result in increased fruitfulness and taking new ground. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Ken. Wonderful. Please be seated. We're the church. We're the people that God loves. We're the people that God has given His Spirit to. We're the people who Yep. He's the 
one that God wants to use. Just close your eyes for a second. I want you to pick you to yourself on Wednesday. Where are you? Sitting at the desk, sitting in the cubicle, driving a car, at home, in a lecture. Jesus is with you. It's okay to be yourself there. Don't be intimidated. Don't be upset. Don't be worried. It's an adventure which goes all the way into eternity. So, here we are on Wednesday. Thank you that you're with us. There's people around us who you're wanting to talk to. God, I just think about that guy at the, serving the groceries. God, all Pastor Ken did was just say, Lord, what do you think about that? And you told him something. And it was good for the guy. So, Lord, we pray that for every one of us in this room, Lord, that you would do the same thing. And uh, because we want to, we want to bring the love of God to people who are feeling under it. And we know you can use us. So we see the fire coming on us. We see the river of fire. Lord, going out with us as we go. And when, when we feel fat, when we feel like that river's, that fire's going out, Lord, just reignite us and use each, use each other, each of us, Lord, to ignite one another and encourage one another and strengthen one another. And we know, Lord, that you will do more than you did in the past through Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Um, we're going to uh, take up an offering right now before we leave. And then after that, if you would like um, Pastor Ken and Raywin to pray for you uh, today. We've already done some prayer, but you can always get more. If you, if you feel like something touched you today or you've come in today and, and you've just, you just need God to just say something to you, well, you can come out the front and we'll give you some time and space and and you can have some prayer. So it would be great. But right now, I really encourage you, um, you, you can uh, use your phone, you can give, uh, if you direct deposit through your phone, just mark it out. Um, um, Pastor Ken offering today. We always give to every single one of our leaders and we, we, um, we do so generously because we want to encourage and bless all the people who come into our church. And we do find that... Um, that we that we get blessed um, as we're generous. So do that, and that will be good. We'll just take a couple of minutes as we get ready to do that. Uh, I think you're already doing that, Pastor Mandy, aren't you? You're already on it. She's all, she's already on it before it even happens. So it's all good. That's right. We're really excited about um, God listening to our prayers and opening things up. I was so excited on Friday uh, when we had this conversation with uh, this community of women that we've been reaching out to because we thought we thought it might be a problem. It was a particular thing that was happening. With the problem became a possibility. It became, like it became this awesome connection to somebody who's looking for God. And so that for me, that really, I'm really encouraged by that. This week, it's great. It's really good. It's fantastic. All right. Rose, thanks for you and Gordon looking after our guests. Really appreciate it. Really do. It's been great. It's good. Right. Well, we'll, we'll sign you up for next time. <laughs> 
don't we all stand this morning? So whether you're going away this Easter or whether you're in town this Easter, don't forget, it's not just a long weekend. Take the moment in the year to remember the greatest moment in the history of the world that everything that was bad with the world got absorbed by God and turned into everything that gave you a future. Not just a future here, but a future into eternity. Father, I pray this morning that all those words that we've heard this morning would be sealed in our hearts. All of the practical things that we've heard about love, about character, Lord, about being filled with the Holy Spirit, we pray you would embed those things and make them not a hard thing, but a thing that we really, doors that we would open and say, I could go through that if I want to. God, we pray that all the spiritual things that have been spoken over us this morning, we receive them in Jesus' name. And I pray for us as a community and also for other communities that people are visiting this morning are connected to. Jesus, would you just move your church forward in Jesus' name, for the sake of the world around us particularly. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great, great week and we'll see you on Friday. Cause I was lost until you found me